Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Ref the District. I'm your host, Nathan Perry, with my co-host, The Stoner. And today's episode, we're going to bring you the weekly update on our warm-up. The game, we're going to be go- talking about this Washington football team's offseason, combining our free agency and draft. And uh, you know what? It might be a little early, but I think The Stoner and I will go ahead and give our season predictions. And when we get to the post game, it's your Caps playoff preview. Now, we are recording today. Normally, we do this live every Sunday at 10 a.m., but Sunday happens to be a pretty big day for a couple women in our lives there, Stoner. That's right. It's Mother's Day, so we're going to record. Although, I, I got to... what What's going on here? Uh, who is this person that <laughs> I'm speaking with at this moment? Uh, have you dialed into the wrong call? Who? What is going on here? Who is this? All right. Who are okay. you? Where's, and what have you done with Nathan? We'll get this Nathan back uh, with with the with the beard in a little bit. We've mentioned a couple times about our our time uh, together, stationed in Germany, our military backgrounds. Uh, you can see, you know, on your background back there, the the uniform. Um, oh yeah, that's and right. so. Uh, so, you know, there's we're not hiding the fact that we both served in the Air Force. Now, I'm going to pull a little bit from Mitch Hed- Hedberg, right? He's, you know, his joke was, uh, I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to. Uh, and I'm going to, so I'm going to use a little bit of Mitch Hedberg here. I used to serve. I still serve, uh, oh, but I used to as well. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm active duty Air Force. I don't tend to mention that because I don't want to, I don't want to use that for for gain, right? So I appreciate you sure. know you know people who who support the military, uh, and and that's great. Obviously, we do, uh, but especially in this area, right? We're like we have a coach, Ron Rivera, who loves you know the service members, and so I don't want to necessarily use that aspect of yeah, my life. Yeah, you don't want to use it to your advantage. No, yeah, no, it is Take it is obviously a big part yeah. of my life. I, I was fortunate to to telework, and then unfortunate to be on convalescent leave. <laughs> For the surgery, which allowed me to experience what post-retirement Nathan will look like, mm. but that's a few years down the road. So that's right. Uh, You're so, gonna like retirement life when you don't even have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So as as things get back to normal, uh, this is this is the normal face you'll see on our. So Sunday it is broadcast. you, Nathan. This it is, is in you. fact me. Okay. Uh, so I'm excited because even, even though, you know, I had to get rid of it and the wife refused to kiss me for a couple of days. She was, she's like, you're a stranger. She, you know, she, yeah, that's she, right. she loved the beard probably even more than I did. Um, but what's good about this is this means that we're getting a return to some kind of normalcy. And that includes Washington has said that they will have full capacity for the games. So full capacity. as a season ticket holder. I'm very excited for this as somebody who also has their second vaccine and the wife is getting hers uh, on Mother's Day. So that's her that's her Mother's Day gift. Um, uh, you know, this is going to be great. We're going to it's we're definitely going to go to the games. We'll tailgate if you happen to if you're going to go to the games and you want to hit us up, just hey, you know, tweet at us, you know, at Ref the District or you can just tweet at uh, me directly at the Nathan Perry. I know. You know, we got three tickets, okay? so we, we have the boy, and uh, but sometimes the boy might not come with a stoner, and you can you can yeah. tag along if you don't I come like to the it. games uh, yourself. I like it. So a little callback to previous episodes when you talked about being a season season ticket holder. Did Jazzy ever get her jersey situation fixed? Still has not gotten the jersey. Still we not? we did find out the name the the name issue. The what you know, so but has not gotten a jersey. We'll get there and then, you know, hey. As long as as long as they haven't taken our seats away from us, I think that's the big thing. I think we'll get, we can we can handle anything else. What are the possibilities of you've noticed it, you've even mentioned it plenty of times. What are the possibilities that the stadium gets filled with all Washington fans instead of getting invaded by the opposing team fans, which has happened really over the last 20 years. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping this is, you know, I've been to, to several games, even though I've, I've bounced around and haven't uh, lived in this area uh, my whole life. I've been to enough games where it, it, and you can, hear, you know, you don't even have to go to the games. You can just watch the broadcast and hear it. Yeah. Right. You get the games get taken over by the away fans. Uh, often, you know, and that's a byproduct of the field, the product on the field where Absolutely. it's just not being good. 
right? So it's not been something people want to go watch. And so, yeah, you're, you know, you can get cheap tickets if you're an, an away fan and go. You know, a lot of people try to put it all the blame on the fact that Washington is uh, this place where you get a lot of transplants and everything. But you know what fixes that? Winning. Winning, Winning fixes correct. that. So, you know, I, it, Washington didn't have a winning season last year, but there's a lot of hope and a lot of hype around this team that we really haven't seen, you know, an excitement around this team since we haven't seen since I, th- I would say 2012, uh, right? RG3's right. rookie season where mm-hmm. it was just electric. And you did see a lot of fans, burgundy and gold, filling the stands. I am imploring, absolutely imploring our fan base to show up. Do not make FedEx an away game for us. Show up in your yeah. burgundy and gold and cheer on the Washington football team. And I hope we get there. You know, I'm, again, I'm a big fan. I've, I've got I've got a Portis jersey on right now. Uh, nice. So the uh, you know, just get there and cheer them on. I'll be wearing the McLaurin. The wife will be wearing Chase Young. Like you can see us. We got the parking spot, so we'll have to do some uh, some uh, pre pre gaming out there it does mean we'll figure this out what this means for our 10 o'clock sunday time slot um, oh yeah it, we get, yeah so because it, it'll be kind of pushing out. into when we need to get to the to the game it also the though means that hey ref the district fans we're going to be doing a special episode on mondays to recap the games so i won't even i won't say mondays because i think there might be enough hype around this team that we might actually get some nationally televised games maybe a monday nighter maybe a thursday night game we'll see when that schedule comes out how yeah. that's going to look we know who we're going to play where we're going to end up well we'll have to see that in the game let's go ahead and get into this warm up here get things moving um it's our weekly update here with the Nationals, we'll start them off. Swept against the Braves. Oh, that was brutal, right? So they had, they had. Well, first of all, last Sunday Scherzer was awesome against that last game against the Marlins. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, complete game. He gave up a home run, I think, in the ninth, um, and he had nine strikeouts. He was classic Scherzer there. That was awesome to watch. And so then they come into the Brave series. The Braves series, riding a four-game win streak, right? And the Braves are on a four-game losing streak. So what happens? Of course, the Braves sweep yeah. them, and they weren't getting good hitting all week. They they haven't gotten good hitting all season, and they got some pretty decent pitching throughout the week. Uh, those three games, but yeah, the Braves were just too much for them. Ronald Acuna, Acuna Jr. is an amazing baseball player probably the best player in baseball not named mike trout and it was just kind of it's tough when they come in atlanta comes in and just gives the beat down yeah yeah so you know they did have a big bounce back game against the yankees we mentioned we're recording this on saturday so that way we can be with our wives uh the mother of our 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 broods um the here they had that big win you get Soto mm-hmm. back, so you hope yep. things turn around because they were atop the NL East uh, with a 500 record. wasn't exactly great. This being swept has sent them to the bottom. You know, <laughs> right. again, yeah. it's a long season. You just want to see yeah. some consistency in there. They're still not seeing that with the hitters. It's good to have Soto back, even if it's just the designated hitter. Fun fact from the Nationals uh, Twitter page there is that he is 22 years old, plays in the NL, but has three home runs at Yankee Stadium. And yeah, Pretty he's big. a beast. He's so much fun to watch. He is. Juan Soto, even if he's not playing in the field. I, I love watching him hit. He never takes an at-bat off. And he he had a lot of good at-bats against the Yankees, and then it finally paid off with that home run in the ninth. And it was the first time all year that they've scored more than eight runs. And it, it was what? It was 3-3 three, three going to the eighth? Didn't they score all their runs in the eighth? Uh, I think it was 3-3. Three, three, and they scored, like, so, yeah, they we, scored like six in the eighth, something like that, uh, when Josh Harrison hit a big three-run bomb. And, uh, yeah, so it was nice to see them finally get some timely hitting. 
Um, but it, I'm still, I'm still a little worried. We talked about this last week. I'm still a little bit worried because it seems to be one of those years. Schwarber's not hitting. Bell's not hitting. Soto's been hurt. Strauss has been hurt. Pitching hasn't been great. It's been good. I don't know. We'll see. Long season, like you said. I just, I don't have a good vibe this year. No, the, again, the big things I need to see heading, you know, heading towards the middle of the season are consistency, stay around 500. I think that's within good striking distance to to, to improve. Un- until when? Until until, when, until when the do you All Star break. Have to get off of that. Okay, All Star okay. break. I'm, you know, the, that's the first half of the season. If you can be 500 at the All Star break, you can you can if you're healthy. That's the other. Okay. That's the other factor. If you're healthy, after the All Star break, you can make a push. You know, to be 10, 15 plus games above uh, 500, but you got to make it there 500, have some consistency and be healthy. 10, 15 games is probably a little bit much to be over over 500 at, if you're at the All-Star break at 500, but it's possible. You can go on some good runs, you know, sweep a few series, don't get swept. You know, you want to avoid, that's the big thing. You want to be avoid being swept. Uh, didn't do that against the Braves this week. Um, so you just so what makes you... Th- what makes you think a team, though, that goes into the All-Star break at 500 is all of a sudden going to turn it around and become a 10-game over 500 in the second half? Usually, by that point, your record is who you are after 80 games, 70, 80, 90 games. That's who you are. Not many teams just all of a sudden turn it around. But that's what well, we can hope. Yeah. Maybe it's a health issue, right? Maybe it's a... Yeah. Maybe Soto gets healthy. Maybe Strauss gets healthy. You get healthy. the trade deadline. You can get some. You can get some more bats there. there you go. So there's okay. there's there's a lot of stuff that that's in play where you can start turning it around. And and maybe ten games above five hundred is you know too much. But often you know if you're five games above five you know five hundred, you know mm-hmm. you can see that a wild card spot from that. So sure. we'll see what it comes out to this year. NL East isn't looking exactly like it, you know a lot of people thought it would, where you had several good teams listed there to include the Braves who you mentioned were a four game losing streak coming into this, to the series. So again, get, get to the all-star break hope above 500 would be great, but at least 500. If you, if you, if you're okay. below 500 at the all-star break, that's where there's a, a lot of panic, I think. And so sure. get, get there, get there at least 500. Uh, and then you can put, make a push, you know, a- after the all-star break trade, trade deadline, make some moves, get some bats, because I think that's really where it's at. I think the pitching is going to come to form. Uh, okay. I, I, you know, Scherzer's less than, you know, Scherzer, Scherzer. So he's he's going to be good by the end of the season. Hopefully Strasburg is healthy eventually uh, this year, and we get some good pitches from him. Is Scherzer going to be here by the end of the year? Is he going to be a uh, trade deadline you know, are they going to move him out at the trade deadline? Mm-hmm. That would be interesting. If they're, if they're, I don't think we want to see seven, that as fans. Under 500. Yeah. So I, I think that if, if they're, if they're, if the season looks lost, I can see them yeah. starting to, to do things like that. And so I don't want to yeah. see that. I want to, I want to see, you know, your, your two seasons removed from the world series championship. So let's hope that they, they make a push. So, well, well, I'm not I'm not ready to bury them yet in the same manner that I buried the Wiz earlier <laughs> this year where I you said did. I am you wrote done. them off. I am out there. Fire the coach, trade all the players. I'm completely out. I'm not ready to do that with the Nats yet. That's fair. That's fair. Well, maybe you should because the Wiz responded. The Wizards turned it around. They are in the playoff spot currently. Uh, they do have a, a, a three-game lead, I think, is what we, we looked at um, against the Bulls. So with five games left, it's looking likely that they will make the play-in. Now, if they get a good push, and my voice changed there, like I'm like I'm still, you know, I think it's the lack just of... just hit puberty? Yeah, apparently the lack of beard has, has returned me to puberty here. Uh, if they get a good push, mm-hmm. they're looking like they might be able to sneak the eighth seed you know they're only a couple games back there uh and the the uh charlotte hornets are the team that they are they're competing with 
not exactly world beater could could end up getting the the eighth seed play them a couple times wizards play them so we'll see where that ends up i'm hoping as a fan i'm hoping for that eighth seed and i know the wizards are too because it gives them a little leeway with the playoffs because the seven and eight play if you lose that game you just play the winner of the nine ten game so you get that little bit of a buffer uh, right, you got two shots at it. So we'll see where they end up uh, by the end of the season. But they've had a, they've been playing really well. So they they, have. they won against the Pacers, won against the Raptors, and a close loss to the Bucks. Yeah, and I wasn't watching the Bucks game, but I was doing the whole follow along online kind of deal. Uh, just had a lot of things going on that day, and I didn't realize until I watched the highlights later on how close that three-quarter court heave yeah, the, that Garrison Matthews threw up there, that almost went in. Yeah, it and was, there was no mention of it like on Twitter or anything. Nobody talked about how close that – that almost went in. Yeah. And that would have been amazing. It w- would have been really did. exciting. Uh, you know, yeah. there was a lot of controversy, I think, that there was also focus on. Gafford was fouled. The, they, did the, the, they did a review mm-hmm. and showed that uh, it was an incorrect no call by the refs. Uh, but oh. Gafford, you, you know, even Gafford, he 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 took some some blame for that because he was just like he just can't. And that you know he had Westbrook that was right there. There was a couple hot hands with the the last basket and stuff like that. You know, Beal is even coming around to that. He's just like, don't look for me at if you got the hot hand. You know, yeah. just shoot. So the team's really coming together here towards the end of the season. Our favorite, our favorite coach, Scott Brooks, even won Coach of the Month for for April. <laughs> yeah, so good for him. That's great. So, <laughs> that's you know, he can that's put exciting. that on his. Uh, he can put that on his mantle as he, or he can take it off his mantle as he packs his boxes and ships out of town at the end of the season. No matter what happens, I'm telling you. No matter what. Yeah, happens. No, I, I'm but, with you. Scotty's got to go. Yeah, yeah. He could put that on his resume, <laughs> but. You know what's interesting about this team? When I was looking at it, if the last game they played against Toronto, which they won by two in overtime, which if they had lost that game, there was the last second three that Toronto hit to tie it. If they had lost that game, I would have been distraught. But when I was looking at that, that was uh, Howell Neto had 25, I think. Robin Lopez had 24. She had 49 points from two guys who at the beginning of the year were barely playing, and they were free agent pickups this offseason. If you look at the team, since Tommy Shepard became the GM, they finally fired Ernie Grunfeld, who had been here way too long. Since he took over, Bradley Beal is the only player. This is since 2019. He's the only player left over since Tommy Shepard took over. The, Thomas Bryant is also there. He's on the he's out for the year, mm-hmm. but but of the guys who are on the roster right now, he's the only the one. Healthy he's ones completely, on the completely, he's completely changed this team, and the contributions that they're getting from guys like Neto and Lopez and Gafford and Hutchinson and Garrett Matthews and of course Westbrook, who we made the trade for, this this completely turned this franchise around. And I think he doesn't get enough credit for that. Yeah, you know, if he would have made one more change and changed the coach, I think he might have gotten a little <laughs> bit more credit. But yeah. but he kept the coach. Uh, and I also think it's hard to give him too much credit right now when you have a player like Westbrook who is playing MVP caliber, you know, basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't. He he probably won't get any votes, which I think would be a, a sham if he didn't no, get he any won't. votes. He first won't. first player that had 50 rebounds, 50 assists in a three-game span. Uh, right. He's ever. 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 In the history he's of basketball. He's likely going to break the triple-double record this season, uh, mm-hmm. and he's taken a team that was well below 500 into a position to play for the playoffs. And as good as they're playing, I don't know that any of the teams in the East no. want to play them in a seven-game series. You might win. They do not. Yeah, it, you might win the series, but it's going to be a battle throughout the entire thing. So Wizards playing great ball, Westbrook playing great ball. Uh, he still's not getting the love from Stephen A. But you know that's that's the mayor of Yabbitville. So 
it is what it is what it is so. and, I, and i said this earlier i said it on twitter i didn't say it on our show but the acquisition of daniel gafford who nobody had ever heard of two months ago but the acquisition of daniel gafford may have turned around not the wizard's season but the wizard's franchise and that's a big statement and i'm not trying to make some sort of clickbait kind of deal but since he got here the entire offense has changed he has allowed these shooters to get open because people are paying attention before nobody paid attention to the center position no no and one no one's respecting the sky hook from from lopez exactly they were they weren't doing it and now they are and it's opened up the entire offense and he's also been a rim protector on defense. I was about to say, it's completely I changed think that's everything. where he's been more important is the defense. Yeah. You've seen the change in the team with his ability on not just being a rim protector, but also just that team defense being able to – things are being set better. And – and because nothing else has changed, right? Like you didn't change your coach. You didn't see any kind of coaching changes there. So I don't think it's Scott Brooks being able to like design something up. It's just right. the fact that that Gafford gels so much better and is better defensively than who they've been able to put there uh, throughout the season that things are working. Because we had – there was individual performers at defense – uh, to include Westbrook and Beal aren't exactly slouches in that area. You know, they're very solid defenders in their own right, but you have the the Nettos and, and the Matthews who will harass people. Uh, but what you were lacking was somebody, like you said, that rim protector and also mm-hmm. just being able to help off and move those things. So him being an athletic big around the, you know, in the paint type area has been just per- phenomenal for, for the Wizards. Yeah, and and... And like I said, again, it's a big statement, but he may have saved or turned around the franchise's fortunes because we were talking about at the beginning of the year, all right, let's go ahead and trade Beal and start all over. And why why did we sign Bertans to this huge deal? And what are we doing with Troy Brown? And Rui is a bust. And who's this Obdia kid who can't shoot threes? And now all of a sudden... Uh, Rui's hitting 27 in one game and Bertans is one of the best three point shooters again. And, and they're just a completely different team since that trade deadline move. And I enjoy watching him also because you'll also see him, uh, when they get the rebound and it's usually Westbrook, right? And if he gets that board and he's gone and the guy who's right with him is Gaffrey, yep. who's running the floor. He's not lollygagging. He's hustling down, and if somebody sees him and goes to him, then here comes Bertans for the three. Here comes Beal cutting to the basket, whatever. And it's just a completely different team. Yeah, they are a very exciting to watch. Uh, I wasn't re- ready to get rid of Beal or anything like that. So if you wanted to <laughs> at somebody, you can at Stoner because that was – No, I didn't want to get rid of Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I like, said there was a lot of people like you're, saying you're, – You're about to bring some fire down trying to – Oh, no, 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 not me. No, no, no. I'm a Beal guy. Beal's awesome. Beal's the right kind of guy to build around because he's got the right attitude, the work ethic. He's got the money, but he still plays hard. He, he plays hurt. He wants to be here. That's that's he to, wants to be. I don't here. think that's ever. I don't know that people really find that valuable as as valuable as I find it. But yeah. when you have a franchise player, they have to want to be here, right? We sure. saw that with we saw that on the Nats with Harper, Rendon. These are people who didn't want to be here. They were studs, yeah. but they didn't want to be here. Beal wants to be here, and you have that even on Washington. You have players who want to be here. And that's good. And, and unfortunately, you see that also with the Washington when it comes to Sheriff. You know, that's a, a player right. who might not actually want to be here, and he's going to find yeah. his way out. And, uh, you know, a lot of people trying to ship him out and uh, potentially get someone like Rodgers because they dream big. They dream big. Uh, dreaming big. We're going to talk about the the Mystics right now. They're in preseason. Lost first preseason game. It's preseason. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep updated on them. As, uh, as they start, D.C. United playing three really good teams uh, to start off the season. One and two. Uh, they do play Columbus on Saturday, so that's a team that hopefully they can get you know back to 500 for. So we'll see how that goes. And I think that wraps up our warm-up. Let's go ahead and move on to the game, which today is our Washington 
uh, football team's offseason. We're going to combine our free agency and our draft. Like, where would you put this for them, for, for Washington, Stoner? All right, so I've got this whole thing prepared for you that I'm going to I'm gonna kind of – normally Nathan is the guy who leads this. He's the professional. I'm the clown that just throws out outrageous statements every once in a while. But I'm going to lead this one. <laughs> Wonderful story. a lot stories, of homework this way. week. Wonderful story. Wonderful stories. story. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to – I did a lot of research on this last week. And so I'm going to not quiz you, but I'm going to ask for your opinion after I give you some good information. Um, but before we do that, I want to give a little side note and or a side question for you before we get into that. And earlier this week, Ron Rivera talked about his quarterback situation and why they didn't draft a quarterback in this particular draft. I think it was with Chris Collinsworth, maybe. It was on a, somebody's podcast. Everybody's got a podcast. We got a podcast. <laughs> Ours is way better than Chris Collinsworth's, if you've seen his but uh, he talked about, he said basically, I'm paraphrasing, of course, that you don't need an elite quarterback to win. That's basically what he said. Mm-hmm. So having a Ryan Fitzpatrick is as long as you've got the rest of the pieces, that's all you need to win. And I wanted to get your thoughts on whether you agree with him on that. Or is he just kind of saving face? or explaining why they didn't go and get a quarterback. No, I, I think that uh, I, I, I think it's very believable that he believes it because I, I don't think Washington targeted a QB in the draft. They did target mm-hmm. quality QBs in the offseason. They were big names, you know, looking to trade for, you know, Stafford. Uh, they, you know, were linked to Darnold. Uh, the prices were too high. And I think that, you know, that right there tells me like, hey, we're in, we want this guy. But then when it, when it got too pricey, they're just like, yeah, we're going to back off. We don't, we don't want to endanger the franchise for one person is, is where I feel like the team thinks for this. And so I believe okay. I believe it that he's just like you can win with a guy like Fitzpatrick. They feel they can win with the people that are on the roster right now. I don't necessarily agree full fully with that. I do think Fitz is going to have a good season. I do think Washington's going to improve with Fitzpatrick as the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I agree that you can win with average QB play. I agree with that. Okay. Where I draw the line, though, is is winning the Super Bowl. You can be consistently good and win with average QB play. And you can win the Super Bowl with even below average QB play. But those are the exceptions, right? Those are the anomalies. When you're wanting to talk about consistently getting to the conference championship games or the Super Bowl, you're going to want outstanding QB play. And you see that with Tom Brady. As many people are like, he's a system quarterback. He's proven that he can move away from New England and still win. Um, so you do need quality QB play for to win a Super Bowl. Now, to win, yeah, no, you can you can win with the average. You know, you're going to be mired in these these uh, these seasons where you make the playoffs or barely miss the playoffs. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, you can you can win. Well, okay, but I I think the I think that the end game is win a Super Bowl, and I and I disagree with him. Of course, you can, but like you said, it's an anomaly. It's the exception to the rule. If you look at fifty five, of course, I had to go and do the research on it. Fifty five. You had Super to do Bowls. math, Stoner. How dare well, we make Stoner no, do I mean, math? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and there's I counted. At best, there were eight anomalies. There were eight guys who are not considered great quarterbacks who won a Super Bowl. I'll take my chances with the 47 who are great quarterbacks and won the Super Bowl rather than the eight out of 55 that won the Super Bowl as an anomaly. Now, I think where where the numbers might get skewed a little bit is – you might have a great quarterback there, but they didn't play well in the Super Bowl. And so that might be his mindset mm. is just like, hey, as if we just have quality QB play, not somebody who's, you know, a world breaker, 
who is at this Rodgers level or Tom Brady level, but somebody who is good, um, they can we can afford to have an off game even in the Super Bowl as long as we have the rest of the team set up, right? Like, and and, and they're they're doing that. This is a, honestly an attractive location, I think, right now. You know, this is this is obviously pre preseason. You know, but they looked good towards the end of last season, and if they can, and they made good good transactions this off season. So. Mm-hmm. Looking at it, this looks like an attractive area for you know a young QB to come into and let the defense carry them. Let some of these young offensive playmakers, uh, you know, help them out so that way they don't have to carry the team. Yeah, so, you know, and I think that's 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 good. You know, the problem is 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 also if they do well this next season, they're they are going to have to to be willing to trade four packages to get a, a, a player that is of a caliber that that you would want you know long term you know they missed yeah. out we talked about their draft last week they they didn't go for one of the qbs that after the the first five were gone there was some talk even ron mentions this in the interview about wanting to go up for somebody but as soon as they were gone they they sat back it. and let the, the let the draft come to them so who do you think that was you know, it, they it's, were, it's they would possibly go after. Looking at the context of it, I thought I think that it was possibly it, Trey Lance um, was mm-hmm. the person who they were thinking about. Justin Fields is the reason why I don't think it's Justin Fields is because Justin Fields was there for a, a hop up, and then they, they yeah. didn't hop up for him. So yeah. there were, there was an opportunity there. So I think it was Trey Lance was the person they wanted, which tells me that you know for next seat next draft. That's the kind of guy they're going to be looking for. They they want one of these big mobile quarterbacks who can make things happen both with the with their arm and with their feet. That's good information yeah. to know. That also tells yeah. me that you know we'll see. You know you know what's different though is like you don't have that in Stafford. He's not he's he's a guy who can move, but he's up there. He's not going to be running around. Same with Rodgers is a guy who mostly gets the damage done with their with their arm. So it's interesting to see them go after that. But you see it in their their quarterback play, their backup quarterbacks anyways. Those those are two somewhat mobile QBs. You're not expecting Fitz to to run for 500 yards uh at at his No, age, but especially. he but he is a he is an athletic quarterback. Yeah, he somebody does who get can out move. Run. Yeah, that's who they want. They want somebody who can move, may, you know, maybe not get there. And Rodgers is sneaky uh with with his play. I'm, I I don't really want to entertain the idea of trading for him because I don't think Green Bay is going to give him up. But uh, I know a lot of a lot of fans are really excited. You saw some of that this week, you know, with the the possible trade scenario and everything. But I think what Washington's doing right now, you know, I'm not going to give it an A if we're giving out grades here. If we're going to do the 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 teacher thing and hand out grades, I'm not giving them an A. But I think they're a solid B for what the what the moves are making. They they went they got a playmaker for offense. They're shoring up that offensive line. I think I think they're doing okay. the moves. You know, they filled a whole couple holes on defense, right? They lost a, a quality cornerback in, in Darby, replaced him with somebody better in Jackson. Um, you got a linebacker and uh, all right, you're and, cutting into my bit here and jamming Jamin Davis. What we're gonna do here? Yeah, you <laughs> asked me. This is my time to talk. That's right? true. You, you, That's this right. is what we do. That's right. But but I'm. You're going to uh, be able to talk on all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, we're going to look at last year's team and the offseason additions on this year's team, but we're going to go position group by position group. Okay. okay. All right. So I've done all the research on, well, whatever you want to call it. I don't call it research, just going on the internet and typing uh, people's <laughs> names in. Uh, but okay, so let's start. Of course, we're going to bury the lead. And we're going to leave the offense and the quarterback for the very end. Okay. But what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to give you last year's players at position groups and then this year's players. And then you're going to tell me, have they improved? Have they stayed the same? Or have they disimproved? What's the right word? Have they gotten Gotten worse? worse. I I don't know. Yeah, gotten worse. I think that's fine. So you got, (laughs) got, got better? Stayed the same, got worse. Okay. okay. 
All right. So get my old man glasses. This is, so Stoner here, he was just like, I have something great for this week's show, but I don't want to tell yeah. you. This is what this yeah. is. This is what this, this is. This is what this okay. is. You right, should have. So you got to come up with a name. You got to do all sorts of stuff for this. Um, well, this is just the... Mm, I got nothing. All right. So... <laughs> All right, so let's start at the safety position. So we're going to start on the defensive end and work our way all the way to the offensive end. So last year, they had Landon Collins, who they signed as a free agent, DeShazer Everett, Troy Apke, Cam Curl, who they drafted in the seventh round, and Jeremy Reeves. Now, I'm only giving you guys who started slash played significant roles. Mm -hmm. I'm not going into guys who are on practice squads or – Never saw the field or saw the field for one game, whatever. Now this year, man, why couldn't have... Apke be on that list? Why can't? Why, can't, why, why do we have to? Why do we have to subject ourselves to to Troy Apke on, on this roster here? Well, apparently Rivera loves him, or or Jay Gruden loved him, and he just kind of stuck. He's a but, speedster. Um, he's got speed to, he's fast. to spare. Except guys always getting behind him, so it's I don't know he where has the zero speed awareness. Is. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. All right, so this year, and again, this is at this point, things can change. Guys are getting released. Even yesterday, guys are getting released. Guys are going to get released in training camp. You're going to have the post-June 1st cuts, all that stuff. But anyway, that's, this is for right now. So you, you still have Landon Collins, DeShazer Everett, Troy Apke, Cam Curl, Jeremy Reeves, and then they added Derek Forrest, the rookie, fifth-round pick out of Cincinnati. So essentially, it's the same guys other than adding Derek Forrest. I would also say so, that, that you get Collins back, right? Because he, 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 he was only he there. He was injured, you know, very early yeah, on the season. Early. Yeah. Um, so in that okay, regard, because of that injury, I would say that this team, this position got better. Only realistically, when you're looking at, at it, I'm going to say that they stayed the same. So even with the addition oh. of getting Collins back and the rookie, I think that they stayed the same, largely because... Collins and Curl excel in the same role. So I did see yep, somebody you know, mocked position. up the, the the positions, and they have uh, they have Collins and Curl on the field at the same time. Unless we see something different from either one of them, that's not going to be a good thing for Washington that's football right. because they don't have a cover guy. They have they have you know essentially box safeties. You know they yep. that, that can occasionally make plays in coverage, but really their their role is better as a as a box safety, and that's why I think that it's the same. I think that they that you know we need one of these other you know safeties that on the roster to really show out to be a coverage person, uh, and or they got to bring somebody else in. They do, and there's some names, and you know what's really great about this is there. You mentioned that there's still chances for people to come in. And there are a couple of people who are cut, you know, from their teams and they immediately were like, I want to go to Washington. So that's yeah, kind that's of a right. good feeling. You know, I, a lot of people, you know, be like, well, these are people who are cut and they're cut for a reason. Sometimes there's, it's a salary cap thing. And sometimes, yeah, they didn't fit on that team, but they worked really well. And we saw that with a, an acquisition that we made and, and getting back an offensive guard that played well here and played okay in Miami and then we get them on the cheap for three million yeah. that that Washington's on the on the hook for this season so but we yeah, so we, maybe Washington is now a destination yeah uh, one could hope one yeah. can hope so yeah I'd say same so out of better same worse same I I agree that's exactly what I have I don't think this is going to be the safety group once they break camp in the in the fall or late summer or whatever that is I think they will end up picking somebody up uh, to to get that other the other safety spot because you're right, Collins and and Curl play the same spot. So, all right, have the same. So let's go to corner. Same. Let's go to cornerback. All right, last year they had Kendall Fuller, who they signed as a free agent. He was their big free agent acquisition. Came, came back. Ronald Darby, free agent acquisition Did last well. year. Those are your two starting corners. Then you had uh, TPC. The People's Corner, Jimmy Moreland, right? I like Jimmy Moreland. Uh, Danny Johnson, Fabian Moreau, and Greg Stroman. This year, you still have Kendall Fuller. You have William Jackson, the free agent from Cincinnati. 
you have Jimmy Moreland, Danny Johnson, Greg Stroman, and the rookie third rounder, Benjamin St. Juiced, and you have lost Ronald Darby to free agency to Denver, and you lost Fabian Moreau. I'm not sure where he went. I don't know if he's still a free agent, but he's no longer he's on the team. He's not with Washington. This is actually yeah. you know minor, minor uh, changes here, but this is where I think they got better. I do think Jackson plays better than Darby. I think Darby had a, a great season with Washington. Some one of these one of these players that benefited from the good defensive line play, uh, and now you're getting Jackson, who is a quality one of the top cornerbacks, uh, and rated over Darby as a free agent. And we we lose Darby, but we get Jackson. That's an improvement. Uh, the Moreau, you know, that's fine. I think that that he he's replaceable. I do like Jimmy Moreland as well. He might be taken out for for St. Juiced. We'll see how that goes. Getting a rangy rangy corner like Juiced, I think, is a is a is a great thing for Washington to have to be able to combat this. You know what we see in today's NFL with their offenses. So this is this to me is a is they're, they're better. This is a better group than than last year. Uh, and one that, again, I think will thrive with the defensive line play. I agree. I agree they've gotten better in this area. And I've heard uh, Del Rio talk about that they might play more press coverage, you know, guys right up on the the line because they have the defensive line to put pressure on. And Jackson which would, thrives in a, in a press situation that's right. better, better than yeah. he does in the zone. So, so, so we'll see. I, th- I think they improved as well. Um, all right, so linebacker. Last year you had Sean Dion Hamilton, Thomas Davis, John Bostick, Cole Holcomb, Kevin Pierre Lewis, and Kalik Hudson. Boston was a, or Bostick was a guy they brought in as a free agent. So was Kevin Pierre Lewis, and Kalik Hudson was uh, a rookie fifth round pick. So that's who they had last year who played linebacker. Group. This year, they still have Cole Holcomb. They still have Bostick. They still have Kalik Hudson. They get back Josh Harvey Clemens, who opted out last year. Um, and then they signed David Mayo from the Giants, a free agent from the Giants. And then they drafted uh, Jamin Davis. I call him Jamin. I know that's not his name. That's what I call him. They drafted Jamin, Jamin Davis, uh, the rookie. So what do you think uh, of that position group? Did they improve, stayed the same, or got worse? It's such an awful group. God, it's so an they, awful oh, well, Hold on. They, just so you know, they. not that you don't know, but I'm just saying, Sean Dion Hamilton signed with Detroit, Thomas Davis retired, and Kevin Pierre-Lewis signed with Houston. So they lost those three linebackers. And then, like we said, they added David Mayo, uh, Jamin Davis, and Josh Harvey Clemens is coming back from uh, from the COVID opt-out. So really, this is this is a, a toss-up for me. They didn't improve. I don't think that they improved. Uh, I mean, Davis, I think, is an exciting player, and I want, he could very well you know, turn around the linebacking core and – and absolutely make this a, a plus. But this group is, to me, you know, barring the rookie breakout, mm-hmm. is a team that is either same or worse. Because you just mm. look, you listen to those names, and there's just nobody on that outside of, again, of a, of a rookie that you took at 19, where some people saw it as a reach, you know, I think I actually might go with worse, and that's not. Okay. And that's sad because you 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 actually kind of upgraded by some of those guys leaving. You know, Thomas Davis yeah, retiring, right. great he player, but he just he at the he definitely was in twilight of his career, and he just wasn't mm-hmm. good. But keep Bostic. Bostic is not good. He's he's lost like ten steps. Mm, um, I disagree. I think he's an he's a very good linebacker. I I think that he's okay. But at this okay. point, I, I just don't see – like this group is by far on the defense the worst grouping that Washington has by a large margin. Like okay. this is a, so this is a C-minus group that we have. Ooh. And I think that they 
probably got worse because unless I mean again Davis the addition of Davis could very well make this a great position group later on but I can't I can't bank on that right now so I I just don't see see this I hope that they continue looking for quality linebackers who might be out there in free agency Uh, again it's a group that hope you can't that this unlike the cornerbacks I think benefit more from good D line play than the linebackers because the linebackers you know they need good line play so they can fill their holes but unfortunately like they just they also have to play a role in that that is the front seven and they're just not good all right so you got them getting worse in that area I got them staying the same because a few guys left a few guys came in whatever they're about the same I think Davis will make a difference simply with his speed and being able to cover tight ends, which Washington just hasn't been able to do for ever as long as I've been alive. (laughs) Ever, ever. All right. So and you're a Bostic guy for some reason. I I do like Bostic. I think he's a I think he's a good player. Um. All right. So, but I thought Kevin Pierre Lewis was a good player too, and they lost him. But he he's a dime a dozen. But he was good. He wasn't like. It wasn't like when Thomas Davis was on the field and you were just like, oh, my God, he can't even he can't even run 40 he yards. He can't run with a lineman, let, let, yeah, let alone exactly. a tight end or running back. You know, watch right, some so more Bostic. The... Do some research on Bostic and you'll you'll see right. he's he's like he's always like a step late or he's okay. out of position. So. All right. Well, that's what Cam Curl is for. <laughs> he comes up and fills that. All right, uh, so defensive line. Oh, and by the way, Landon Collins is not switching to linebacker, nope. right? That was made very clear this week. All right, defensive line. So you had Chase Young, of course, uh, rookie, number two pick, first round, number two pick. You had Ryan Kerrigan, Deron Payne, Tim Settle, Jonathan Allen, Monte Sweat, Ryan Anderson, James Smith-Williams, who was a rookie seventh round pick, and Casey Tuhill, who they picked up, I believe late in training camp or maybe early in the year uh, from uh, Philadelphia. And I, if I remember correctly, Philadelphia was not happy about losing him. I think it was a practice squad kind of deal. Mm-hmm. They tried to stash him on the practice squad in Washington, uh, picked Plucked him up. Him. to Yeah, and he was, uh, he was pretty decent. All right, so this year you have Chase Young. You still have James Smith-Williams. You have... Uh, Deron Payne, Tim Settle, Montez Sweat, Casey Tuhill. Then you've added, from the IR, you've added Matt Ioannidis. You've added two seventh-round picks also in Shaka Tony and Bradley King. Now you've lost, at this point, you've lost Ryan Kerrigan. He's still a free agent. There are some people who want to bring him back. I don't know that Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera want to bring him back. But he's still out there, but no longer on the team because he's a free agent. And then they lost Ryan Anderson to the New York Giants. So did they get better? Stayed the same? Did they get worse? You know, maybe it's I'm high on on Ioannidis, but him coming back is huge. That I think so. This huge. is I think they get they got better with him coming back. Uh, you know, they did lose Kerrigan and, and obviously I'm a, I'm a fan. You can see the Jersey hanging behind me here. Um, but I think that the youth, I, I, I like Tony. I, again, I'm not going to put too much on a, a rookie, especially a rookie that was taken in the seventh. Um, but as a specialized, you know, you know, pass rusher, I think that can, that can pay dividends for, for Washington, but just having Ionitis back is huge. Uh, having Ioannidis back, if he's if he's fully healthy, to me this is a guy who you know when you're talking about trade packages makes you know a lot of people put him in the trade package, uh, but I think this is where he makes one of the other defensive tackles possibly an attractive option to put in there because he just plays mm-hmm. so darn well. You know, for for a pick who is he, he's very young, he's already got his extension in. He's with the team mm-hmm. for a little you know a little bit longer and you know, was outplaying, you know, the other defensive tackles or at least making more impact plays. I'll say that. I don't want to necessarily say that he was outplaying them, but making more impact plays than Allen or Payne. You know, he's somebody who I'm excited to have brought back on this defensive line to cause havoc. I think that he's going to, 
you know, thrive playing against Young. Sweat, you know, has, you know, had an okay rookie season, great sophomore season. Look for him to improve. And with the interior and the, the you know, exterior working together, I just think that this group is going to be better than they were last year, and they were good last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they improve, like you said, simply by bringing Ioannidis back. Because if, if you had, let's just say Ioannidis played for New England, okay, and he is the player that he is. And somebody said, all right, we're going to trade you Ryan Anderson and Ryan Kerrigan for Matt Ioannidis and two seventh-round picks. You'd probably do that based on Kerrigan's age and Anderson's lack of production, right? So you'd probably make that trade thinking your team is going to be a little bit better. And that's essentially what they're doing here. Yeah. It's all the same except for those uh, those players that I talked about. So, yeah, I agree. I think they've gotten a little bit better on the DL, on the not on the down low, on the defensive line. <laughs> All right. Now, that's the defense. Let's go to the offense. Okay. And we're going to start with the big uglies, the offensive line. Here you go. Last year was Morgan Moses, Brandon Sheriff, Chase Rouye, Wes Schweitzer, David Sharp, Cornelius Lucas, Wes Martin, Keith Ismail, who was a, a rookie fifth rounder out of San Diego State. He's the backup center. Jerron Christian, who spent most of the year on the IR, and Sadiq Charles, who spent most of the year on the IR, uh, who was a rookie fourth rounder that they picked that year. This year, you have Morgan Moses, Brandon Sheriff, Chase Ruye, Wes Schweitzer, Cornelius Lucas, David Sharp, Wes Martin, Keith Ishmael, Jerron, Jaron, whatever you call him, Christian, Sadiq Charles. Those are all the same guys that I had already mentioned, and they've added their second round pick Cosme, Sam Cosme. And they brought back Eric flowers, uh, free air trade. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was a trade, right? Trade. It was like yeah, a they, contract tra- they traded, kind of they, trade. they swapped seventh round picks. Uh, yeah. this is where he's, he's pay- being paid 9 million, but 6 million of it's being taken care of, uh, by yeah. Miami. So you get this guy for yeah, 3 million. That. You want, they wanted him back. After his season, yeah. after his season in Washington, they wanted him back, but Miami offered him more money, and now they get him on the cheap and for for the deal. So it's it's pretty good, pretty good pickup by Washington. So so all the guys from last year that were part of the, were were starters, significant contributors, or expected to be significant contributors, like Sadiq Charles and Jaron Christian, they're all back. They didn't lose anybody from that offensive line. And then you've added Cosme and you've added Flowers. And some of these guys are getting cut because they're not keeping all these guys. Yeah. So who knows who that's going to be? Maybe your uh, Wes Martins or David Sharps or guys like that. Who knows? I'd be surprised if Wes Martin cut. makes the cut. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but he was he was your backup guard on both sides, yeah. I believe. He was your right and left guard backup. This this position group to me stayed the same. I I, I like having Flowers back. Uh, really, I think that this is a, a sheriff insurance uh, more than anything. Uh, you know, so the the interior I think actually had they gelled pretty well there for a while. The the the, the three inside the mm-hmm. tackle position. Moses had a good year last year. The left tackle situations. You know, you hope that Sam Cosme. Uh, can play well, but realistically, this is a group that I just think feels right where they were last year, even with the additions and swaps, that they're you're not going to see much of an improvement uh, unless you, you know, get good left tackle play out of Cosme. I think the interior will still play about the same, which is to say pretty good. I think I, obviously Sheriff is getting all all pro nods. Uh, so good for him. He can put that on his resume when he, you know, is getting paid. You know, he like leaves a, town when he leaves town. Um, Chase uh, as our as our, you know, our center has worked out pretty well. Mm-hmm. So, I, but yeah, I think this group just stayed the same. Just I, again, stayed the same. Yeah. I I think they got better. I think they got better simply with the addition of those two guys. It's the same guys, but then you brought in a second round pick and you brought in a guy who's already proven to be 
a good guard in the past for your team. That that to me says they got a little bit better. I'm not saying they got exponentially better, but they got better. This is like changing from a from a from a B to a B plus for you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exa- that's exactly right. All right, let's go to the tight ends. Last year, Logan Thomas, Jeremy Sprinkle, Marcus Baugh, and Tamaric or Tamaric Hemingway. This year, Logan Thomas, Marcus Baugh, Tamaric Hemingway, and they added John Bates, fourth round pick out of uh, Boise. And then they added Samus, Sammy. I don't know if the S is silent. Right. Samis, yeah. Reyes, uh, the rookie basketball player, never touched a football in his life. Was not even going to make the 53-man roster. You hope, because there's then, a dollar riding on that one. <laughs> that's right. And then they lost, of that position group, they lost Sprinkle, who signed with uh, the Cowboys. Yeah. So did they get better? Yeah, they stayed the same or got worse? You know, to stay consistent with how I've been essentially ranking the rookies is that this is a group that stayed the same. I don't think losing Sprinkle is a big deal. Um, I'm higher on Reyes than you are. And yes, I don't know correct. about their other rookie. We'll see how, you know, how he plays. Um, but, you know, this is it's a good thing that, you know, the transition from QB to tight end worked out and uh, that uh, he played well for Washington last year. But this is a group that stayed the same. I, you know, I, I wanted more, more, you know, I'm hoping Reyes. Maybe that's why I'm higher on him is I'm just hoping mm-hmm. That we have a more dynamic tight end um, play because we just we just have a bunch of just a, just a, another guy. We have a bunch of jags. Yeah. Yep, we certainly do. But I think there's going to be somebody who we're going to talk about later that we're going to add to that group. We'll get to that. All right. So running backs. Wait, wait, Last wait, wait, what did you, you had, say? Oh, I said they stayed what? the same. You didn't give me your rating. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, they stayed the same. Stay the same. Okay. Yeah. They didn't try to get improve. away without giving me a, yes. a, your ranking. Say the same. All right, running backs. Uh, you had Antonio Gibson, who was your rookie third round pick out of Memphis. Turned out well. You had JD McKissick, who was a free agent, and you had Peyton Before Barber, that. who was a free agent that they signed. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, you have Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick, Peyton Barber. You have Lamar Miller, who they signed late last year as a free agent. I don't believe he ever saw the field. And then you've got Jarrett Patterson, the rookie free agent that didn't get drafted. And I remember when they signed him, and there was a lot of guys that talked about him, a lot of guys on the team who really wanted him to get signed. I believe Chase Young. He played, play he played, with, he Chase played Young? with Chase Young when they were kids. And, yeah, they went to the same school. Okay. That's, yeah. okay. So, and I was like, I heard this Jarrett Patterson guy, but why, why is so many people talking about him? And then I remembered he's the guy who scored eight touchdowns in one game. Yeah, 400 yards, college. eight touchdowns, yeah, yeah. And then you look at him, and he's like, I don't know, he's like 5'1", maybe 75 pounds, something like that. He's, just, <laughs> he's a tot. He is a tiny dude. But they signed him to a contract. We'll see. Um, you didn't lose anybody from your original group. You still got Gibson, McKissick, Barber. They have Bryce Love on the roster. He's still on the roster. I don't know what's going on there. No, they he did hasn't come. played I thought they two come. years. Oh, they did? I'm pretty sure they did. Whatever. That Someone correct experience. us. You know, they go ahead and let us know if they if they did. We'll, we'll look it up. But I want to say he's not on the team any longer. Yeah. So what do you think? Did they get better, they stayed the same, or get worse? You know, this is where, I th- again, just to be consistent, I think they just stayed the same. I'm hoping that some of these younger guys, uh, you know, the Patterson, you know, he's – a lot of people are like, you know, he's could be built like a Sproles, but he's not a catch. He's not a pass catcher. So he's more of like an MJD. Uh, and and so does he push Peyton Barber out of the role? Or maybe, but a lot of people are like, Miller is better than Barber. So, you know, hopefully you don't have to find out about those guys because yeah. you have, you know, a good tandem with McKissick and, uh, and Gibson. So... I, I just want to be consistent here so no one calls me out saying that I'm too high on, on this rookie and not on this rookie, but I'm going to say that yeah. they stayed the same. I do have yeah, hopes sure. that, that Patterson does push out one of these uh, 
one of these older, you know, bruiser backs because that's what Peyton Barber is, and Lamar Miller right. does offer some pass catching ability. So that's he. That's where he's a little different. But if you're looking for a guy just to do that third and short, Patterson, I think, could potentially knock out Peyton Barber. And, you know, the problem and the reason why he went undrafted is not just because of his size, um, because he had he performed well, even though his size. But it was also he he doesn't have the breakaway speed. So, like, he right. he can get he can get out, you know, 20, 30 yards, but they're gonna, the, the cornerbacks are going to be able to chase him down is, is the thing. So uh, we'll see. You know, you hope that, you know, he pans out where I think that he will. And this is what where, where it becomes interesting. And this is where you might see some improvement. But again, I think they say the same is that Ron Rivera and Washington, the, 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 the Martys, they purposely traded back in to get a couple picks because they didn't want to have to deal with undrafted free agents. They wanted to save that money. So this might be an area where they still have some... Uh, some money to move around in free agency to see if there's somebody out there. So we'll see. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how you could say that they, they got better or got worse when essentially your three guys who play, they're the same three guys as last year. So yeah, they definitely, I think stayed the same. And here's, here's something you may not remember. And it kind of hit me as I was looking through all this, who was the starting running back? In the preseason last year. Do you remember? It wasn't any of these guys that we've talked about. And he was he was the guy. He was the the guy until Gibson was like, Oh, okay. So so this Gibson <laughs> yeah, kid's this, pretty he's, good. He's actually you can actually go. really good. Uh you know, I don't yeah. I don't you remember. Well so this is uh we had already let Peterson go. No, this was it was Peterson. It was Peterson. He was in camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought. Well, I mean, you, oh, that's right, because uh, Adrian Peterson was cut prior to the final cuts. Yeah, because it was mm-hmm. because all of a sudden Gibson was showing out in camp, and they're like, "Okay, we need to get let Peterson go. He's fine. He does everything we ask him to do. He's great, but we need touches for Gibson because he's special and he's young. So you can go and find another team. Yeah, we kind of forget that Adrian Peterson." was supposed to be the starting running back last year. It had, but had a decent season go. before. He, he's aging, but the guy can still run. Yeah, he can still, still play. Still enjoy watching him play. And he went to Detroit, I think. Mm-hmm. And he and they ended he up getting pretty well. Yeah he, yeah, he ended up being thrusted into a starting role uh, for a yeah. while after some, some injuries and some poor play. Uh, yeah. I think he's back to looking for a team. So we'll see yeah, where he ends up. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if he ever gets a team. I doubt it. All right. So even though we don't really need to figure out whether they improved in the wide receiver group <laughs> or not, we yeah, already this isn't know. like a real question here. But but it's it's just interesting to kind of look at these names. Oh man! And I last don't want to year, listen, listen to these names: Terry McLaurin, then Cam Sims, Stephen Sims Jr., Isaiah Wright, Dontrell Inman, Antonio Gandy Golden. And Robert Foster. Those are your guys who played and who played significant time. And so, the, and that was it. Those were your guys last year. Then this year, you've got McLaurin, you've got Curtis Samuel, you've got Adam Humphreys. Cam Sims is still there. Isaiah Wright's still there. Steven Sims Jr. is still there for now. Gandy Golden's still there. And then they added Deami Brown, the rookie third rounder out of North Carolina. They bring back Kelvin Harmon off of the injured reserve, assuming he's healthy. They brought in free agent DeAndre Carter, mostly for punt returns and kick returns. Make Steve Sims Jr. more expendable. Yep. And then they brought in Dax Dax Milne. Dax Milne? Dax Milne. Seventh rounder out of Syracuse, maybe? No, I think. BYU. He was... Uh, BYU. Yeah, he yeah, was... Yeah. He was uh, the second round, so, Wilson's number one target. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so they lost uh, Inman. He's no longer on the team. He's still a free agent. He hasn't signed with anybody. And then Foster, Robert Foster, signed with Miami. So they've officially lost those two, but they still have the others on the roster. Tell me, have they improved <laughs> in this particular position group? Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get much worse than, I think, the, the group that they had uh, 
you know last year Samuel alone is it takes you from a D group to or an even possibly an F group I'd probably give him D because McLaurin's that good uh, a yeah. D, D group up to a B group and then you you know Humphreys is I think a solid player I'm not as certain that he's going to st- stay on the team as you are because I do think mm-hmm. like Deami Brown um, is you know a, an exciting talent I'm not going to rate the rookies too highly, though. I'm not going to say that they're going to change. But just the addition of uh, Samuel already makes this an exciting group to watch. Yeah. And a vast improvement that you might actually have somebody who can play alongside McLaurin and be, you know, be a threat to the defense. Because there wasn't. There was no... Cam Sims occasionally did some exciting plays, but... You know, this is a you know this is a young guy who you know is going to be that fourth receiver. You know, in the next few years, I don't think he's going to ball out because he's going to be pushed down the lineup because he's a big guy. But you know, you get more dynamic players in front of him. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think this group got better. Yeah, they improved uh, tremendously, um, and I've heard. I I haven't heard from coaches obviously yeah, or GM your sources people. your source my sources uh, and you know how good my sources are <laughs> uh kelvin Harmon may be converted to tight end okay a lot of people right? assume it was going to be you know gandy golden who's converted but yeah. i think Harmon's a little bit bigger and not as fast so he would be a little bit more tailored to that position and when he played that year, if you watch a lot of his highlights, he did a lot of blocking downfield. Of course, those are corners. Those are safeties. They're not 300-pound defensive linemen or ends coming around that you're helping at whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I have heard that maybe they're going to move him to uh, to tight end a la Niles Paul about 10 years ago, which worked out pretty well. Yeah. Well, he, was a, he was a good he, tight he end. He was good. He was, he was very yeah. serviceable. I, honestly, I think it would be very smart, you know, with this this r- receiver group. Mm-hmm. If the coach comes to you and says, "Hey, we want to move you to tight end," you say yes and get your butt over into that position group and learn. Like you should be learning if you're on the bubble right now, and you're one of these bigger guys like uh, Gandy Golden or Harmon, you should be learning how to block linemen right now. Right, Steve Sim Jr. You're too small. You're probably just yeah. going to go unless you've you're spent your entire off season learning how to catch punts. Um, you know, because like honestly, that's where that's where you're at, right? Even Cam Sims, if they if they're just like, hey, we appreciate what you did for us Maybe last Cam season, Sims. you know, but you're a big guy and the receiver group's crowded. Could you play tight end? Yes, sir, and immediately like do a lap around the field and then end up in the tight end area and start learning. Cause you know, that's where you're going to stay on the team. And if you want to earn a paycheck, that's what you're going to do. So Harmon's an interesting one. I'd have to, I'll have to watch some more on him from his rookie season. I thought that there was some potential there. It was unfortunate that he got injured. I, and he got injured like in the off season. Too, yeah. He right? got injured in the off season. The so he never had, he never had the, the chance. Know. You know, he, I, we talked about this before when it came to the receivers, he's on my cut list mostly because he was injured and he's not a Ron Rivera guy. So he's got to show that he can fit in with Ron Rivera's, you know, mentality and, Mm -hmm. you know, love the game and show that and show that he's like a a yes, sir, no, sir. I'm going to, you know, do what's asked of me and not complain uh, because it's for the better of the team. He's got to show that. So yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, there might be some promise. It'd be interesting. I, I, I do think they need help on the uh, the tight end side. Uh, I just don't think, you know, I, I called him decidedly me- mediocre uh, last year. Mm. And I know that people people disagree with me, but I just don't think that... Like, that's why I think I'm just hoping Reyes pans out. I'm hoping that you get somebody who is, you know, at Reed's level of excitement for... Uh, for tight end play because we haven't seen that since him and we even when we're talking about his retirement you look back at the stats and you're like he actually didn't have the numbers it's just but he had those exciting plays we need that right. at the tight end we need somebody who 
who can threaten these linebackers and these nickel corners. So, Isn't it weird that, that tied in is the one position in all of football that guys can convert to from other positions? Like Logan Thomas is a former quarterback and this Reyes kid. And you've got Hall of Famers, Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez. They were basketball players, mm-hmm. never played football. The kid in uh, Indy. Uh, can't his name escapes me right now. They're they're tight end. Mo Alley Cox. He was he played basketball at Virginia Tech, I think, or VCU. He played uh, basketball at VCU, and and now all of a sudden he's a he's a tight end making millions of dollars. I think it's I think it's, I Tim think it's, Tebow. Yeah, I think that it's uh, yeah. T- Tim Tebow wished that he would have made that move sooner. The uh, the I think where where it's where where this comes from is the fact that it's kind of like a tweener. Like you need you you. You got to be big, but not as big as an off- offensive lineman. You should be, you know, be able to move. I won't say necessarily fast, because uh, Jason Witten tore up Washington for years, and he's not a fast right. guy. Um, and Log- Logan's not fast. Logan Logan's not fast. Um, but you have to be able to move. Mm-hmm. So, but you don't have to move as well as a receiver. And so that's where it's just like you get the you get you just you're looking for the matchups on defense where you can, you can make a play. So yeah. we'll see again. I'm, you know, you mentioned why I'm happy all these converted basketball stars. That's why I'm hoping Reyes can be the next one to, to yeah. pan out for, for Washington here and really bring this up. This, that, that crew up Harmon is an interesting one. I think that could be, but I think that if you switch Harmon or Gandy golden out of the wide receiver group to the tight end group, I think that you get Niles Paul type play, which is solid but not exciting, and I think yeah. they already have that with Logan Thomas. So, well, like you said, it's probably in their best interest. Oh, absolutely. To go ahead and make that this move. this group improved. They stay. This you know they they this group was so bad they went in the off season got a top you know top three wide receiver in Samuel, and then they got Humphreys as well to be like yeah we we don't like the people we have in our slot right now which tells you a lot about where again steve sim jr status is like this guy he's a slot receiver they get humphreys he's a returner and they get the the kid who literally specializes in returning he doesn't like doesn't do anything else but return yeah like so yeah so he's out so they have improved vastly and you know, so that that's what I'm saying. If a coach comes to you and says, "Hey, we want to convert you," I don't care if it's just like, "Hey, we have a fullback position." You put your hand down in the dirt and just figure it out. That's right. Uh, it, you know what I don't hate? I don't hate lining up on offense with Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Deami Brown, Adam Humphreys, Logan Thomas, and Antonio Gibson. I don't hate that at yeah, all. Yeah, four receiver sets where you don't have to see Dontrell Inman and right. I, Isaiah Wright had Isaiah some good Wright. good nah. flashes, but it's Isaiah it's Wright. Jack. Like it's just like yeah. I I think my favorite highlight of Wright. I might have mentioned this before is when he saved an interception. Like that was it. Yeah. It was like a bad throw, a and he like yeah. managed. He started playing defense, and he and he saved the interception, and that was it. That's like the, if that's my highlight of your entire receiver career. It's probably not good. It's not going to be good. So Yeah, that's right. No, yeah, well, speaking uh, of bad throws, yeah. let's move uh, uh, to the quarterback situation from last year. Um, so you had Alex Smith, of course, and I've already forgotten about this guy. Dwayne Haskins yeah. was actually on the team last year. Can't even remember it. Kyle Allen, and then you had the one game, playoff game with Taylor Heineke. And then this year, of course, you've got uh, Fitzpatrick, Heineke, and Allen, and Alex Smith, of course, retired, and Dwayne Haskins is now in Pittsburgh. And when we were talking about tight ends, I forgot to mention maybe Steven Montez will convert to tight end as well because there has been some weird talk about that. But, I mean, this is another position to where you can obviously say they have vastly improved from last year. Vastly improved. You think they got vastly improved? They've gotten better. They 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 got better. So in the in the better same worse category, they're better 
I don't know that it's a vast improvement. I mean, two of those okay. guys you named you're right, you're right. You know, probably played, played for Washington last year. Montez is not somebody that I expect to do anything. They, you know, there was some mention they, they kind of have Montez do things that uh, the kid from New Orleans does. Um, mm -hmm. So where you have some, some sets for him, because apparently he's a mobile quarterback. Sure. Uh, but I think they got that also with Kyle Allen and Heineke, who has shown yeah. that they can be mobile as well. Fragile, but mobile. Yeah, very fragile. Um, yeah, All I right, mean, so losing Alex Smith was yeah. is a hit. Okay, so that's that that you lose some from 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 Alex Smith, and from a leadership perspective, from a person who, again, for whatever it's worth, a team wins are a team stat, but the teams win with him at quarterback, right? So. Mm. Um, yeah, losing Haskins, that's a that's a that's a, a positive by subtraction situation there right. where you get better by by getting rid of him. Uh, I you know hopefully he can turn it around, but he just didn't have it here. I'm surprised you don't remember because you know we talked quite a bit about how Rivera was just like there's going to be a QB competition, yet Haskins gets it and Haskins doesn't look good, um, so. You got put back in, not good. This was a bad, 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 bad position group last year. They're mm -hmm. improved, but they're still, I would say, probably one of the bottom third QB position groups across the NFL. And that's what me. Right. I like Fitzpatrick. I'm on, I'm on the Fitz magic train. I think that yeah. he's going to do wonders for this offense. But when you're looking at it, like you would rather have, you know, probably at least a dozen other quarterbacks than Fitzpatrick on this roster, you know, so now they weren't available. So that's a problem. So, you know, out of the guys that they could have gotten to help this position, Fitzpatrick, honestly, was, I think the best one. So here, you know, here's an improvement, but we're talking it's improvement from, from D to D plus or D to like a C minus. So yeah, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't go okay. vastly improved. Yeah, all right, that's fair. I mean, last year I was I was advocating in the playoff game that they should have pushed Alex Smith out there in a in a wheelchair if you had to because he was the best the best guy for the job. That's how bad it was. So and then and Heineke oh, the did way, well. Heineke the Heineke, Heineke hype is real. Well. I was very surprised. you know the Heineke uh, hype is real. I didn't. I, I didn't see that coming. There are fans out here, and this is we we we're going we're going a little bit long right now. But I you know I just because we're on the QB group right grouping right now, we're and we're not going to talk Rogers exclusively. There are fans though that don't want Rogers on the Washington football team because we have Taylor Heineke. I don't get it, Stoner. I don't get it. I like the kid. I think that he could play some exciting football for Washington football team. But this is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Like, there's that trade package. You run. You absolutely just, you, you're you like, yes. And you you immediately make the phone calls to the guys and be like, pack your bags. We're getting Aaron Rodgers. You got to go. Um, no. All right. Two, two firsts. Two seconds, Fitzpatrick and Ionitis. Done. done. I like Ionitis. I, I I'm just done. Like you, Oh yeah, done. You, so you can trade again, I don't think Ionitis is as high as as like Deron Payne or, or Jonathan Allen. I think you get you throw either one of them in there. This is what this is actually a QB that I, I as much as I was just like you can't trade sweat when we we're talking QBs, you know, earlier, throw sweat in there. Fitzpatrick you know pain and the sweat whole team. you get rogers if you can guarantee that you can sign him to this guy yes yeah, so he's 37 now he'll be 38 this year you know this is you know but you have tom brady in his early 40s winning super bowls if you can right. keep rogers upright and healthy that's this is five he's years of 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 aaron rogers Hall of Fame quarterback play. Yes, you can win. Ron Rivera, yes, you can win with an average Joe. But if you can get Aaron Rodgers for two firsts, two seconds, and a QB that you signed for $10 million in the offseason and a position player that you have extra of, do it. You just do it. 
Absolutely. You don't want Aaron Rodgers because of Taylor Heineke? Are you kidding <laughs> me? The hype is too big. To the hype. I I really really like the kid, but the hype is too big. You go after Aaron Rodgers, regardless of where Ta- Taylor Heineke is. If if Heineke can push Aaron Rodgers in camp, holy smokes, you got a gold mine and trade to get those picks back because uh, Aaron Rodgers yeah. means you're picking in the late twenties. You know, for the next couple that's, years. That's where so, you want to be. So picking. great, good deal that yeah. you got rid of those. Anyway, All right, so, so we're not going to talk today, about that. <laughs> that's a good rant. Uh, today, May 9th or 8th or whatever day it is here and whatever day it is there. <laughs> whatever, whatever day, day you we're watch. Recording yeah. And whatever day we're posting and all this other stuff. What What is the record you are giving Washington football team for the 2021 season based on all that we just talked about with all of the roster improvement disimprovement whatever the word is what would you give them better right same now? worse better same worse just get, just keep it simple um i i think that this team can go 10 and 7 and it feels weird okay. with that extra 17th game added in there instead of saying 10 yeah. and 6 but this is i think could be you know 9 and 8 um 10 and 7 i think is very reasonable for this group i think the group overall is going to be improved I think you're going to see some some improvements on offense. I think the defense will continue to play well. The, this is a second year with Rivera uh, and Jack Del Rio where they actually have an offseason. So I think that you're going to see some improvement. The The bummer is, is we're also playing much better opponents, right? Washington mm, will be much. playing much better opponents. And so in that regard, that's where I just don't see a huge jump. Um, but I do think that they themselves will be better. So, you know, nine and eight. I'm actually going to, I'm going to not 10 and seven. We'll go oh. nine and eight. We'll go nine and eight is where I think. Nine be. And eight. Well, as much as I'd like to have a totally different opinion than you, just so that we can debate about it, I, I'm right there with you. I think I would 10 and seven. I think that's where this team is. I think they are going to be much improved from last year. And they went seven and nine last year. They're going to be much improved. Yes, it's a much tougher schedule, but you know what? All those other teams, they're going to say the same thing about Washington. They got a much tougher team that they're going to play in Washington. And I haven't been as high on this team, this high on this team since 2013, when after their great 2012 run. And I thought 2013 was going to be amazing as well. And it hasn't, obviously. And I just I think this is a team to be reckoned with in the NFL. Ten and seven because of the schedule. Otherwise, I might go eleven wins. But it's possible. And it is a tough. Where, where it's going to be interesting will be, you know, just because these are good teams from last year doesn't don't mean that doesn't mean they'll be sure. good this year. There's a lot of parity in the NFL uh, sure. where you see some up and down. Look at look at the NFC East where no team has won it back to back for 17 years now. Uh, yeah. So, you know, does Washington right, right now, do you think Washington is the first team to break that in almost two decades for the NFC? Actually, actually, no, I don't think they will. I don't, I think they will be a wild card team. One of these teams, it's going to be either Dallas or the giants are going to be better than Washington. But of course the entire season hinges on one player and one player only, and that's Fitzpatrick. If he plays at least decently, he's got the supporting cast around him to help them win. If he plays not well and you have to go into your second tier of quarterbacks, they're in trouble. Taylor and that's Heineke, the same with man. every team. You don't need Rodgers. You have Taylor Heineke. <laughs> but, that, but that's the same with every team. The Giants season, they added some incredible players. Uh, the wide receiver from Florida, Kadarius Tony. They added um, Galladay from Detroit. They've got scary offensive weapons uh, because Saquon Barkley's coming back. But none of that matters unless Daniel Jones plays well. Same with Dallas and Dak Prescott. If he comes back healthy, they've got scary weapons. So it all depends on the quarterbacks. Just like it does every year. This is no different. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how the season plays out. 
very close predictions for the stoner and myself. Where do you place them? Where do you place our Washington football team? What's their season record? Let us know. You can let us know in the comments or you can at us on, at, on Twitter at ref the district. And, uh, and we can see that there, you know, this has been the game. Let's move on to the post game. Uh, caps have been, uh, you know, they had a couple wins against the Rangers. There might've been some kerfuffle. You might have heard about that, Kerfuffle. and then they and then they lost yeah. the Flyers, which was bizarre. Uh, so they might not be able to overtake Pittsburgh now with two games left. Pittsburgh right. is in, the, in in the driver's seat there. Um, so as they head in, they have another game against the Flyers tonight. Yep. This is we're again we're recording Saturday. Normally we record live on Sundays. You can join us here on YouTube. Um, but they got the game against the Flyers. And then they got the game against who is their most likely opponent, which could matter, right? This could be the game for home ice against the Bruins yep. to close out the the season. Obviously, they want this. They want the. They would love for Pittsburgh to lose against uh, the the Sabers, the awful awful not Buffalo going to. team. You know, so. They're not going to. Pittsburgh is going to win that game. They're going to seal up the first. So they're not going to be able to play the Islanders, a, a team that they beat six out of eight games. Um, so they're going to end up against the Bruins, who currently, you know, they they are three and four against the Bruins this season. Mm-hmm. The games have been kind of all over the place. There's the 8-1 victory for Washington. There's the 5-1 loss to the Bruins as well, though. Where do you see this going for them in this best of seven series if they play against the Bruins? Well, here here's the thing about the Caps. The worrisome part is, of course, Ovi's injury. We don't know how bad it is. Hockey is very good about not disclosing injuries. We know he sat out four games, came back on the ice for one shift, and took himself off. And then he's missed another three games, I believe. And his health is extremely important for obvious reasons that you don't have to get into. But also you've got this Kuznetsov situation, which him and his buddy Samsonov, for whatever reason, was very late to a team meeting. They got suspended. kuzi has got a history of things like this. Two off-seasons ago, I believe it was, when he had the situation in Russia where he had photos taken of him and he had a pile of cocaine sitting there. And the next thing you know, he's suspended, not because of the picture, but because the rumor is a failed drug test. So he hasn't played since that suspension. So you got no Ovi and no Kuzi and no Samsonov. You don't know who the goalie is. So you're going in right now to the playoffs and you're not at your best you're not at your healthiest you don't have all of your best players and that's worrisome because you're playing you're going to play against a tough boston team obviously but the difference in this caps team from the last couple of years when they haven't won the cup is that they've gotten incredible play from their third and fourth lines guys you probably had never heard of before this year and that's really what helped them win the cup a few years ago, is they had guys like Jay Beagle and Devontae smith Pelly and and Brett Conley, guys you never heard of, who were having career years and playing well in the playoffs, scoring goals, and they have that this year. So I'm worried. That's kind of the overall picture, is that I'm worried about this team. They're not at their healthiest. They're not playing their best. And I'm not sure what to expect. Who's the goalie? Is Kuzi ready to go? Does he have his head on straight? Is Ovi healthy? Uh, Oshi lost his father. Obviously, he can play yeah, under those circumstances. Yeah. But that's a, a tough situation. Does Eller t- hasn't does, been does, healthy. Does Willie continue playing for the team? Only fined yeah. $5,000, which the <laughs> right. Rangers were fined 50 times More. that for, for, <laughs> for, the, for the ridiculous statement. Just absolutely yeah. Ridiculous. They should be arrested or whatever. Yeah. And then they're, they're that game, the game afterwards, where it was just fight after fight after fight. I, I don't know if Wilson really left for an upper body injury or maybe it was just pull him off the, the ice so that way we can just play well, th- the game. I think he hurt his hand punching, punching the guy's head. 
Yeah, I think because you could see him thing. afterwards. Well, whatever. That he was having problems. With. I mean, you're hitting a guy with a helmet on. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing ever. Some guys, when they have fights and they know they're going to fight, they throw off their helmets too. But not all the time. So you just start punching a guy. I, and think, I think if Tom flat. Wilson comes at me, I'm keeping my helmet on. I'm just, just going to. Well, first Tom Wilson ain't going to catch me. <laughs> really really stunner are you gonna outrun how'd that work out with your kids when you're running around with the with the kids huh let me tell you tom wilson's coming after me i'm running faster than tom wilson. <laughs> or better yet i'm running faster than who's ever with me if it's my kids <laughs> i'm running faster than them trip the and let kids. tom wilson catch them <laughs> yeah all right yeah i oh, i have I, i'm with you here this uh this brewing series worries me that's why you know you they're still got a hope that uh, they can go against the Islanders because I think they, they they will beat the Islanders if that's the the, the series. Um, but they need to get healthy and they need to you know they need to play better. They're a good team, but so are the Bruins and the mm-hmm. Bruins have shown that they can they can beat you. So it'll be interesting to see how that that game goes. You know they play against the Flyers Saturday night again. We're recording this because tomorrow is Mother's Day. And I think happy should... Mother's Day, Adelina. And happy Mother's Day, Jazzy. So w- happy Mother's Day to Chase Mother, it, you know, as well. So happy Mother's yeah. Day to all the mothers out there. We recorded Absolutely. so that way we can be with our our lovely brides um, and pamper them. You know, breakfast. I don't know if what you're doing. I won't tell you what I'm doing because now I don't. I don't want Adelina to get on you. And be like, well, Nathan's <laughs> doing this for for Jazzy. Um, yeah, right. But uh, you know, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And, uh, you know, hey, this has been Ref the District.